Extreme weather throughout this year has had a devastating impact around the planet. Nations have been scrambling to respond to record temperatures, devastating floods, extreme wildfires, and drought as water supplies dwindle. In what is set to be the hottest year on record, the Conference of the Parties is set to take place for the 28th time at a gathering most referred to as COP28. Parties attending this annual climate change conference include 197 nations plus the European Union. They have joined hands in combating dangerous human interference with the climate, as defined by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which took effect in 1994. More than two decades later, in 2015, 196 parties agreed to work together towards a common goal and signed the legally binding Paris Agreement. COP21 delegates pledged to limit the average global temperature rise to less than 2 degrees Celsius higher than pre-industrial levels. Ideally, they would keep that temperature increase to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. The countries also set a target of net zero emissions by 2050. As part of the accord, governments agreed to track their progress and report back every few years. That's what the first ever global stock take, or GST, is all about. It will be center stage at the two-week-long COP28 in Dubai. Host countries have faced controversy at past events, but the backlash against the COP28 host has been especially fierce. Critics have targeted the United Arab Emirates not only because it's a major oil producer, but also because it selected a leading fossil fuel executive as conference president. Fossil fuel interest in TOP28 is large. It is ironical that the headquarter of global fossil fuel is also where they are hosting COP28 with their political visibility that that, possible, that COP28 has given to them, it is expected that they will now determine the games of how the world disengages or reduces or lessens emission. Essentially, it means the new game for how the world progresses to reducing emission will be determined by the major polluters who accidentally are fossil fuel industry, headed by countries like Saudi Arabia and and UAE. However, key players like U.S. climate envoy John Kerry have endorsed the UAE appointment of an oil industry leader to oversee UN climate talks. The UAE was the first Middle Eastern country to ratify the Paris Accord and has committed to reaching net zero emissions by the middle of the century. The 1994 UN framework says the global stock take should be a moment to take a long, hard look at the state of our planet and chart a better course for the future. It was envisioned as a time to assess everything related to where the world stands on climate action and support, as well as identify the gaps. What we are looking at now is like an evaluation of what we've done, how we've made progress we have reaching the collective or reaching the zero emission. Technically speaking, the stock take actually has the capacity to take us to that threshold where the risk we are supposed to face uh, is limited. But given the political consideration and machinations of the different parties who are on different levels of development, we are headed for harder times in the future. That is the elephant in the room of the Paris Agreement. The global stock take is supposed to take place every five years, with 2023 being the first. Preparations for it started in 2018, beginning with two years of data collection. A technical assessment of the data followed in Madrid in 2023. The UN stock take report was finally published in September. It showed how far off track the world is from meeting pledges made in Paris to stop global warming. The planet has already warmed by 1.2 degrees Celsius, 
Countries are far from reaching their Paris Agreement goals, and the window for the world to limit global temperature increase to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels is rapidly narrowing. With the report done and sent to all the countries that will be present in Dubai, the scientific and technical phase of the stock take is done. Now, the political phase starts. The report underscores an urgent need to further slash global greenhouse gas emissions, which means a radical shift in lifestyle, work habits, modes of transport, and energy consumption around the world. I see Africa as having to use their natural resources to be able to meet their developmental needs, concurrently also seeking to reduce their emissions. That, again, is a big issue. China, for instance, has the challenge of development. China wants to rapidly develop its society and is using its national resources to be able to meet its goal. Essentially, China is levering, leveraging its access to coal. And coal also is a fossil fuel. That is one of the major issues that climate, um, climate activists fight against, or rather, are trying to mitigate. But Countries also like China have also embarked on trajectories that are balancing their fossil fuel and also so their uh, renewable energy development. So essentially, the answer is whether all the countries can collectively agree to be able to meet their climate ambition. If they do that, then we can say, yes, we are headed towards achieving our goal.